Jana Shama. This meeting is being recorded. Chakzur Militanye Nat has my Sri Gurave Namaha. Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Pristaya Bhutale, Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane. Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschatya Deshatarine Hancha Kaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevata Patita Nam Pavani Vyo Vaishnavivyo Namo Namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasadingor Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare So we're retelling the story, the pastimes of Lord Krishna as described in the Krishna book, which is the tenth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. And we are on chapter number 33, the description of the Rasa dance. So we heard how Lord Krishna had disappeared from the gopis and the gopis were very distressed to lose Krishna. But then we heard how Lord Krishna returned to them and the gopis were very happy to be back with Krishna. So, so they, and we heard in the last class how the gopis asked Krishna about, you know, how you how does sometimes a man treats a woman very harsh and it seems very unkind, but Krishna pacified them by spe speaking very nice words. So the gopis were no longer feeling the pain of separation from Krishna because they heard Krishna speak to them. And they were also able to touch Krishna. They were able to touch his hands and his legs. So then Lord Krishna began the rasa dance and all of the gopis took part in the rasa dance. So these gopis were the most beautiful and they were the most fortunate girls in the three worlds. And the gopis of Vrindavan were so attracted to Krishna and they were able to dance with Krishna hand in hand. So, it's very important that we should understand that Krishna's dancing with the gopis is not like any ordinary dance. So, 
มันไม่ใช่เป็นการเต้นแบบวัตถุ Sometimes young men and young women they will go to the ballroom and they will dance. Sometimes they will listen to music and they will dance, but that is very material. บางครั้งเนี่ยเราจะเห็นได้ในโลกวัตถุเนี่ยก็จะมีหญิงสาวกับชายนองเนี่ยเต้นกันเขาจะเปิดเพลงแล้วก็เต้นกันด้วยความเหมือนเมาหรืออะไรก็แล้วแต่แต่อันนี้เนี่ยมันแตกต่างจาก But Krishna dancing with the gopis is completely spiritual. And Krishna showed this by expanding himself into many forms so that he could dance with each of the gopis. He would have a gopi, one gopi on each side of him, and he would put his hands on the shoulders of the gopis. But the other gopis, they could not understand how Krishna had expanded himself to be with each of the gopis. And each gopi thought Krishna is dancing with me, only with me. So while that dance was going on, all the demigods they were watching. In their airplanes, they came with their airplanes from the heavenly planets, and they were eager to see the dance of Krishna with the gopis. There are higher planets in heaven, demigods. They came there with their wives. And they were watching the rasa dance, and they would shower flowers onto all the dancers. So all the gopis they were all dressed with different ornaments and bangles, and when they danced, it made a very beautiful musical sound. And when Krishna and the gopis danced, they showed wonderful bodily features. The way they move their eyebrows and their smiling, and the way they dressed and their earrings and their hair with flowers, everything was arranged for the pleasure of Krishna. So when Krishna and the gopis danced, Krishna's bodily features they were just like a a, a group of clouds. And the gopi songs, they were just like thunder. And the beauty of the gopis was like lightning in the sky. And because they were dancing, they were sweating. 
and the sweat, the drops of sweat, perspiration on their face was just like snow. So in this way, the gopis and Krishna were enjoying themselves dancing together. And the necks of the gopis became all red. The neck of the gopis became red because their desire to enjoy Krishna was increasing more and more. And to satisfy the gopis, Krishna began to clap his hands in time with their singing. And Prabhupada says the whole world is full of Krishna's singing. But different people appreciate it in different ways. Krishna is dancing and everyone else, all other people are also dancing. But there's a difference between the dancing in the spiritual world and in the material world. Krishna is the master dancer and everyone else is his servant. Everyone is trying to imitate Krishna's dancing. So when somebody is actually Krishna conscious, then they will respond, they will, they will know how to respond to Krishna's dancing. If somebody is Krishna conscious, they will not, they will not try to dance independently. But people in the material world, they try to imitate Krishna. They try to imitate being God. And so in the material world, people are dancing under the direction of Krishna's Maya. They think they're equal to Krishna. But this is not Krishna consciousness. In Krishna consciousness, a devotee knows Krishna is the master and everyone else is his servant. So a devotee will dance to please Krishna, not to imitate or try to be equal to Krishna. So the gopis wanted to please Krishna. So when Krishna sang, the gopis would encourage him and they would say, well done, well done. 
พวกโกปีเนี่ยก็จะทรงเสริมกระชาอย่างมากโดยการบอกว่าไพเราะมากเลยไพเรามากเลยเก่งมาก And sometimes the gopis would play beautiful music for Krishna's pleasure, and he would praise them. และบางครั้งเนี่ยพ่อโกปินก็จะเล่นดนตรีที่แบบไพเราะเพราะมากและบางครั้งกฤษณาก็จะตอบพวกเขาโดยการชมพวกเขา So then, there were some of the gopis that became tired. Because they were dancing so much, and they would put their hands on the shoulders of Krishna. And then their hair began to loosen. They had their hair all tied up, but their hair loosened, and the flowers in their hair fell to the ground. แล้วผมที่พวกนางมัดไว้เนี่ยมันก็เริ่มหลุดดอกไม้ที่ปักไว้มันก็เริ่มหลุด And when they put their hands on Krishna's shoulders, they could smell the fragrance of his body. และตอนที่พวกนางเนี่ยวางมือไว้บนไหล่ของฉันเนี่ยพวกนางสามารถได้รับกลิ่นอันหวานชื่นจากภาวะระกายของคริสตัน And so they became very attracted to him. แล้วพวกเขาเนี่ยก็จะรู้สึกยิ่งแบบลงไหลกระชนาเขาไปใหญ่ And sometimes Krishna would give them betel nut. He had betel nut from his mouth, and he would give it to the gopis for them to eat. แล้วบางครั้งเนี่ยพระองค์เนี่ยก็จะมีมีหมาไว้เขียวอยู่แล้วท่านก็จะแจกท่านก็จะแบ่งตรงนี้เนี่ยให้กับพวกโกปีกิน So the gopis would get Krishna's prasadam, and they would eat Krishna's prasadam, and they would make spiritual advancement. So, so the gopis would become tired from singing and dancing, and and and. Because they were so tired, they would take Krishna's hand, and they would put their Krishna's hand on their chest. And in this way, the gopis enjoyed the company of Krishna, just like he was their husband. Actually, the gopis already had their own husbands, but they forgot that they had their own husbands at home. ความจริงเนี่ยพวกโกปีเนี่ยมีสามีอยู่แล้วแต่พวกนางเนี่ยก็จะลืมไปเลยว่าเฮ้ยมีสามีอยู่ที่บ้าน And they were only thinking about Krishna as their only husband. แล้วพวกเขาก็คิดอยู่เสมอว่ากฤษณาเนี่ยเป็นสามีของเขาแทนเป็นสามีผู้เดียว They were dancing and singing with him. They forgot everything. พวกเขาเนี่ยร้องเพลงแล้วก็เต้นอยู่กับกฤษณาโดยการลืมทุกสิ่งทุกอย่าง So the Sri Mad Bhagavatam describes how they were so beautiful. They had lotus flowers over their ears, and their face was covered with sandalwood pulp. And they had tilak, nice tilak on their face, and from their. From their feet, you could hear the sound of the ankle bells. And the flowers from their hair was falling on the feet of Krishna, and in this way, Krishna was very happy. And 
So all of these gopis are Krishna's pleasure potency. They're all expansions of Krishna's pleasure potency. So Krishna would touch their bodies with his hand and look at them with his with his eyes and he would enjoy the company of the gopis. He would enjoy the gopis just like a child enjoys looking at his own reflection in his mirror and playing with it. And when Krishna would touch different parts of their bodies, the gopis would feel more spiritual energy. And their hair and their clothes would become loose and their ornaments would be all loosened and they would forget, they'd forget everything in the company of Krishna. So all the demigods, they were watching in the sky, the demigods had come there with their wives and they were watching the rasa dance from the sky. So it described the moon, the moon god, he was, he, when he watched the rasa dance, he became lusty and it became, it, it was so surprising to him. He wondered what is happening. But the gopis had prayed to the goddess Katyayani previously. When they were younger, they prayed to the goddess Katyayani that they wanted Krishna as their husband. So now Krishna is Krishna was fulfilling their desire. He had expanded himself. As many as there were gopis, there were there was a Krishna, form of Krishna. So each gopi had her Krishna with him, just like a husband. Now Krishna is Atmarama. Atmarama means he doesn't need anything. He doesn't need anything. He, he he's satisfied in himself. But because the gopis wanted Krishna as their husband, Krishna wanted to fulfill their desire. So when Krishna saw the gopis were tired from dancing, then Krishna used his hands and put his hands over their faces so that they would get rid of their fatigue, their tiredness. Uh, 
ก็จะใช้กระชาเนี่ยก็จะก็จะใช้ฝ่ามือเนี่ยเหมือนกับลูบไปที่ใบหน้าของพวกนางเพื่อเช็ดเนื้ออะไรอย่างนี้ให้แล้วก็ทำให้พวกนางเนี่ยหายเหนื่อย So the gopis wanted to reciprocate. They were very happy that Krishna was touching them with his hand. And they began to sing. All the gopis began to sing the glories of Krishna. So all of these gopis, we have to understand. All of these gopis are not ordinary little girls. They are pure devotees who have taken birth as gopis. So the more they enjoyed Krishna's company, the more they wanted to give pleasure to Krishna. They wanted to satisfy Krishna by, by talking about his pastime. The gopis wanted to worship Krishna because Krishna had given so much mercy to them. So the gopis wanted to repay him by worshiping him. So then Krishna and the gopis entered into the water of the Yamuna because they were very, it was very hot and humid and so they were, they were, and they were very tired so they went into the water of the Yamuna. So the, the, these gopis, they were all wearing flower garlands, and the flower garlands, the flowers were all lily flowers, and they had them, but because they were wearing them around the neck, and because they'd been embracing Krishna, so the flowers had all become crushed. <laughs> And, and they're, they're in the forest, so there's many bees. So the bees were all coming to get the honey from the flowers. Because all these flowers were around the neck of the gopis, so all the bees came around their necks to get the honey from the flowers. So Krishna and the gopis entered the Yamuna, just like an elephant enters with his many female companions. Yeah, they forgot they forgot their identities and they began to play and, and they began to feel relief from the dancing because they were so tired and, but with the water the cool water they felt they felt refreshed so the gopis began to splash water on the body of Krishna and they were smiling and Krishna was enjoying this. And the gopis began to splash water on the body of Krishna and they were smiling and Krishna was enjoying this. 
หลังจากนั้นพ่อมนางก็ยิงกระชากยิงกระชากสักละ And Krishna began to splash the gopis with water. In this way, they were all enjoying, and the demigods in heaven, up above them, they were watching and showering flowers on them. So the demigods, they were all praising this rasa dance of Krishna. They thought this is so wonderful. Then Krishna and the gopis came out of the water, and they began to walk along the bank of the Yamuna. And there was, there was a nice cool breeze blowing, and there was a nice aroma of different flowers. And while Krishna was walking on the bank of the Yamuna, Krishna was speaking, reciting poetry, different poetry, which he 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 knew. So in this way, Krishna and the gopis enjoyed the company of each other. In the moonlight, under the moonlight of the autumn season. So it's mentioned that in the autumn season, this autumn, when the s h r a s a dance took place, this is the time. When sex desire is very strong. But the amazing thing about Krishna with the gopis is that there was no sex desire. The sex desire was fully controlled both by Krishna and the gopis. So this is the difference between Krishna dancing with the gopis. An ordinary dancing between men and women in the material world. So, Maharaj Parikshit has been listening to Sukadeva Goswami describe about Rasa Lila, so he has a question for Sukadeva Goswami. So he said, Krishna came on. He appears in this world to establish the religious principles and to get to stop all irreligion. But when we hear about Krishna's behavior with the gopis, it will encourage people to do sinful activities in the material world. So Maharaj Pariksha said, "I'm surprised that Krishna would do this, 
that he's having the company of other people's wives in the middle of the night. So Sukadeva Goswami, he appreciated this question. This is a good question. He said, there's a, a class of people who always want to put themselves in the position of being Krishna. And they, and they, they think they're Krishna and they think they can enjoy other women and girls for themselves. So the Vedic rule, no man can have association with any other woman except his wife. But it, it, it seems like Krishna and the gopis, they're not following this rule. So Maharaj Pariksit said, I'm very surprised to hear about Krishna doing like this. There's a class of people who like to associate with young women without marriage and they claim that this is spiritual. So, Maharaj Parikshit wants to clear up, he wants it to be understood what is the actual situation. So, Maharaj Parikshit was he's thinking that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he's come to establish religious principles. So how could he mix, how could he be with other people's wives in the middle of the night? and dance with them and embrace them. This is not very culture. And when the gopis had first come to him, he told them to go home. So to dance with them and enjoy their company this is very terrible. How could Krishna do this? So some people may say that Krishna is very lusty with young girls. But Maharaj Pariksha said this is not possible. He couldn't be lusty because he was only eight years old. A boy cannot be lusty when he's eight years old. And remember, Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
he's, he doesn't need women to satisfy him. Even if we say, well, he is lusty, he doesn't need women to satisfy his lust. So somebody may say, well, maybe he's not lusty himself, but because the gopis were lusty, they may have taken advantage of him. But Maharaj Pariksha said that's not possible because Krishna is born in a very, very pious family. He's born in the Yadu family, the Yadu dynasty. So Krishna could not, the gopis could not take advantage of Krishna. It's not possible. So Maharaj Pariksha still wants to understand why did Krishna do this? What was his real purpose? So Sukadeva Goswami, he was a brahmachari and, and he's a, a strict brahmachari. So for him, he could never take part in any sex with young girls. Yeah. And, and all brahmacharis, and especially Sukadeva Goswami, Sukadeva Goswami is a very topmost, he's the best of the brahmacharis. So, Sukadeva Goswami explains that sometimes Krishna as a supreme controller, sometimes he may do something different from the religious principles. Just like if you have fire, you can put any kind of thing in the fire, any horrible thing in the fire, and the fire will burn it. Just like the sun, the sun, the sun can take water from the urine or the stool, can dry the stool, and the sun doesn't get polluted or contaminated. The sunshine will purify the contaminated place and it will it will disinfect the, the place. So somebody may say, well, Krishna is the supreme. And so we want to follow his activities. We should follow whatever he does, we should do. But, see, Krishna may give an instruction. It doesn't mean he has to follow the instruction. 
บาคริชันเนี่ยจะทรงให้คําสั่งแต่นั่นก็ไม่ได้หมายความว่าพระองค์เนี่ยจะต้องปฏิบัติตามคําสั่งนั้น Just like the father may say to his daughter, "You come home at night. I don't want you to be out late at night. You come home early." ตัวอย่างเช่นคุณพ่อเนี่ยจะบอกกับลูกสาวว่าโอเคพรุ่งนี้เนี่ยเออเธอเนี่ยห้ามกลับบ้านดึกเอออย่ากลับบ้านตอนดึก So daughter may say to the father, "Well, you stay out late at night." แต่ลูกเนี่ยก็อาจจะเถียงพ่อกลับบอกว่าอ้าวแล้วไหนพ่อไม่เห็นกลับบ้านตอนกลางคืนเลยตอนกลางคืนพ่อยังอยู่ข้างนอกอยู่เลย My father will say well it's my house I'm the father I'm the head here I'm in charge you have to do what I say I don't have to do what you say แต่คุณพ่อจะตอบว่าอะไรอันนี้มันบ้านของฉันฉันสร้างมาเพราะฉะนั้นฉันสามารถทําอะไรก็ได้ที่ฉันอยากจะทำเพราะฉะนั้นเธอไม่มีหน้าที่จะมาบอกฉันว่าฉันทําอันนี้ไม่ได้ทำอะไรไม่ได้ So the same way Krishna may give instructions. It doesn't mean Krishna has to follow all of his own instructions. So we shouldn't try to imitate Krishna's activities. So Sukadeva Goswami warns people, conditioned souls, that don't try to imitate. Don't try to imitate the supreme personality of Godhead. So if somebody may be a m a y v a d i he may claim to be God. He may say, "I'm Krishna," but they cannot act like Krishna. And he may even tell his followers. We are going to dance Rasa Lila, and the young women there they may think, "Oh, okay," and they dance Rasa Lila with him. But he cannot pick up Govardhan Hill. Oh, Just like in the time of Bhakti Vinod Thakur, there was one man in Jagannath Puri. He was saying he is an incarnation of Vishnu. And he was corrupting. He was having illicit affairs with many young women and even married women. They were going to him, and he was seducing them. So Bhakti Vinod Thakur had him arrested and put in prison. So no one should imitate the Rasa Lila. And if you try to imitate Krishna's Ras dance, you'll be killed. Just like if you try to imitate Lord Shiva, Lord Shiva drank an ocean of poison. So if you try to imitate Lord Shiva drinking an ocean of poison, you die.
หรือบางคนอยากจะลอกเลียนแบบพาสิวะถ้าไปลอกเลียนแบบโดยการไปกินยาพิษแบบนั้นเราก็จะตาย So the same way don't try to imitate Lord Krishna's dealing with the gopis It happened under very very special circumstances All right, we will stop here and ask if there's any questions. Anybody has any question? Yes, Shaya Mataji. How are you? Hare Krishna. Krishna, Guru Maharaj, the number of this accept my humble obeisances. Okay, to Sila Pavupan. I'm fine, Guru Maharaj. อาจารย์นะคะพี่มีคําถามสงสัยว่าเนเบอร์เรารู้ว่าปิชนาเนี่ยเป็นผู้สมบูรณ์ทุกอย่างเป็นองค์บังวันทีนี้เนี่ยเหมือนกับว่าปิชนาเนี่ยมีความสุขได้ตัวตัวเองแล้วก็ไม่ปรารถนาสิ่งใดแต่พี่ความสงสัยของพี่ก็คือทําไมปิชนาถึงมีความสุขเวลาที่ที่สาวโบกะค่ะทําการเสียสละอุทิศตนเสียสละรับใช้หรือว่าทําอะไรให้ปิชนาอย่างนี้ค่ะอยากให้ครูมหาราชอธิบายตรงนี้ให้หน่อยค่ะอืมโอเคขอบคุณค่ะอ่าโซเฮอร์ควีชันอีสอัสยูเซ่ปริชนาอีสเฮียส์เอ่อสักติฟายบายฮิสโอนโซเฮดอนนิดอ่าแอนนี่วันทูดูแอนนี่ทิ้งฟอร์ฟอร์ฮิมโซเอ่อไวส์เฮียแฮปปี้เวนวีดูเซอร์วิสฟอร์ฮิม Why is he happy when we do service for him? Well, he's happy to see us make some advancement. He sees that we are coming back to him and we're recognizing our relationship with him. So this is pleasing to Lord Krishna. Just like in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, "If you offer me with love and devotion, a leaf, a flower, a fruit, or some water." I will accept it. Why does Krishna accept it? Because he wants our devotion. He doesn't want the fruit or the flower or the the water or the leaf. He wants our love and devotion. Love and devotion conquer Krishna. Krishna is never conquered, but he is conquered by the pure love. Of his devotees. So Krishna has everything for himself, but. He wants our love and devotion. He doesn't have that. h 
Haribo, Arjuna, can you hear me? Oh. Arjuna? Archana. I think we lost her. Arjuna, good Oh, you're back. I am there. What happened? I think in internet connection went oh, wrong. Okay. So I was saying. Krishna is conquered by pure love and devotion. No one else, no one can conquer Krishna, but Krishna is conquered by the pure love of his devotees. So that love of his devotees is very special to Krishna. And when he sees a devotee offer something to him, then it gives him pleasure. Just like I was reading today, I was reading about Ananta Shesha. You know Ananta Shesha? Ananta Shesha is a form of Sankarshan, who's a com who comes from Balaram. So Ananta Shesha is the form of a big serpent in the bottom of the universe and he, ho he holds the universe on his hoods. So it said Ananta Shesha is angry. He's always angry. Why is he angry? Because Everybody, everybody in material world, they're all in the bodily concept. They're thinking, I am the supreme, I am the controller, I am God. But when Krishna, when Krishna sees someone do some devotional service, he understands, oh, they're coming back to me, they're coming back to Godhead, they're recognizing me, they're recognizing my relationship with them. He's very pleased. <laughs> Just like if you have a little child and you, you know, a little child, you may give some money to your little child and the little child may take the money you give it and they go and buy something, they want to buy a present for you. And they they bring the present, they bring the present, they say this is for you, I brought this for you. And of course the child bought it with the money you gave the child, but they bring it to you. Will you not be pleased that your child brought something for you?
Yeah, you feel so much pleasure. Oh, my little child brought something for me. Of course, you gave the money, but <laughs> the child brought it to offer to you. The same way Krishna is giving us, and if we bring something to offer to him, it's pleasing to Krishna. เราจะเราก็จะรู้สึกมีความสุขมากถ้าเกิดว่าลูกเราหรือว่าเด็กเนี่ยทำอย่างนี้กับเราใช่ไหมคะในลักษณะเดียวกันความสิ่งที่เร
Om and one, we want to understand these things, we should go through the other nine cantos of the Srimad Bhagavatam, then we can understand it. But it, it's also mentioned that people who hear, even though they may have some material desires, if they hear this Rasa Leela in the proper way, they can become purified. So, we could say the benefits outweigh the dangers. The benefit being that those people who are worthy of hearing Rasa Leela, they'll be greatly benefited. They can take pleasure in hearing it. And people who are not purified but who hear it from the proper channel, they will also get some purification. So we just have to be careful not to hear Rasalila from Prakrita Sahajyas, from people who take everything very cheaply. And don't hear the Rasa Lila from people who are speaking Mayavadi philosophy who are saying we're all God or we can all become Krishna. But if we hear it from a devotee who is saying we're all Krishna's servants, then it's good for us. Just like I saw, I saw in the news, there was a news, somebody got vaccinated and they died. So they said, yeah, there's a danger that some people may get vaccinated, they may die, but a lot of people will benefit. And so they said the benefits outweigh the danger. That's what they said. Yes, my thank you very much. Okay. What's the other other question? Uh maybe Vaishnavi Mataji. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, here they are saying Krishna is eight years old. So the gopis are also like of the same age, but uh, we are seeing uh, in uh, the pictures like Krishna like a young man and the Radharani like a young lady like that. Uh, even in the temple, so I was thinking, uh, uh, yeah, about it. And uh, my next question is, uh, uh, there is an analogy like uh, Krishna enjoyed the gopis exactly as a child enjoys playing with the reflection of the body in, in a mirror. Uh, I couldn't understand this, Guru Maharaj. Uh -huh. Well, the point is that uh, all living entities, we are all part and parcel of Krishna. Uh, 
So Krishna thinks of all the, the gopis, you know, like his parts and parcels, that, that, that we're like, you know, we're, we have an eternal relationship with him. Just like we have a relationship with our reflection, the reflection it's the external, it's a reflection of the original person. It's not the person, but it's a reflection of the person. And that reflection will act as the person does. Whatever the person does, that will be shown in the reflection. In the same way, the devotee will act as Krishna wants us to act. The devotee's only desire is for the pleasure of Krishna. He has no other purpose than to satisfy Krishna. He's not independent of Krishna. Just as the reflection in the mirror is not independent of the person. The, the reflection is fully under the control of the person. In the same way, the gopis, the devotees, they're fully under the control of Krishna. And yes, Krishna is eight years old. What's your point about it? What was that point? Ah, yes, Guru Maharaj. What's my point is we are seeing right in the temple when in Mayapur that Krishna is a young man and Radharani gopis are young ladies. So I was a bit confused. Did they grow up or? Uh, yes, Krishna grows up to the point of youth, to, to, to the point of youth, about 15. And he never grows older than that. He is, Krishna is called Nava Yovana, eternally youthful. Mm. So he, he, yes, the, the gopis and the Krishna, they grow up to that point of youth and then they, they don't grow any older. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Anybody else has a was it Sham has a question? Yes, yes. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes. All glories to Sila Prabhupada. Thank you very much, Maharaj. You are in the full class, very clear and detailing. Maharaj, I have a little confused of my question is Krishna is the Atma Ram, he gives everyone to the pleasure. But here the gopis are most top devotees, 
but when they got, uh, they got look like they get more painful, like when the expression with the Krishna, and we heard it is they're crying and their tears come out, become a river. So they are that much painful. Uh, so how do we understand? Because their gopis are topmost devotees and they get that much painful. So how we understand Maratis? Thank you. So Krishna arranges these different pastimes. For example, Krishna sometimes separates himself from the gopis to increase their love for him, so that when he returns, they will feel more ecstasy. But if he's always with them, then they don't, they don't have that ecstasy, they cannot experience that ecstasy. So it's to increase the devotee's love for Krishna, that Krishna arranges these different situations to put the devotee sometimes into what appears to be distress. But that distress is actually ecstasy. Lord Chaitanya describes this ecstasy in the in the Shikshastikam prayers. He says, O Govinda, feeling your separation, I am considering one moment to be like twelve years or more, and tears are flowing from my eyes like torrents of rain. I am feeling all vacant in this world, in your absence. So this is the symptom of bhava, devotional service in ecstasy. This is an advanced, advanced level. To come to that level, first you have to do the rules and regulations, and then gradually you come to Baba. Yeah. Other, another question, Arjuna? Thank that? you very much. Uh, no good if there was asthma. No, more. I thought you had a question. <laughs> no. No? Okay. All right, so we will stop here tonight. Thank you very much you. for your translation, Thank you. Archana. Thank you. Thank all the Thank devotees you. for t taking part and for your questions. We wish you all keep safe and healthy and have a good week. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.